Hello pool owners, it's your boys Matt and Rob and today we are talking salt pools, specifically the process of converting from traditional chlorine to a salt system. Before we get into the pros and cons, let's hit the basics. Rob, take it away. Well, the truth about salt pools is that you're still using chlorine. Instead of the manufactured tablet in liquid form you get off the shelf, your cell uses the salt in your water to generate a pure form of chlorine. This salt generated chlorine allows you to keep chlorine levels lower, improving your water quality and the swimming experience. For a better idea on how it works, let's take a closer look inside the cell. Here we can see the cell's titanium plates, which have a small electric charge applied to them. And here comes the salt in your water, aka sodium chloride. When the salt strikes the charged titanium plates, the salt molecule splits, freeing the chlorine to hunt for bacteria and algae. The best part of the electrolysis process is that it's renewable. After the chlorine and sodium are done doing their own thing, the two reunite back into sodium chloride so that the process can begin all over again. Okay, so now that we know how salt chlorine generation works, let's look at some of the other reasons to switch to salt besides it being a renewable source of chlorine. The big advantage of salt pools is not having to handle chlorine tabs or liquid anymore. Not only are the old forms of chlorine caustic and dangerous if handled improperly, it also has a relatively short lifespan in your pool. This means you're constantly testing and dosing your water. On most salt systems, adjusting chlorine production is done with a simple twist of a knob. The percentage notes how long your cell would be active in an hour. For example, if your system is set for 50% production, the cell would produce chlorine for about 30 minutes in any given hour. But most pool owners will say the biggest advantage is the change in your pool's water. A traditional chlorine pool that is not properly maintained can produce unpleasant chlorine smells, along with red eyes and itchy skin. These symptoms are caused by chloramines in the water. Salt chlorine generators burn up chloramines and provide a continuous supply of free chlorine, keeping your water smelling and feeling fresh. But salt is not all good news. Salt water has a naturally higher pH, which can lead to calcium buildup called scaling. Scaling looks like this and can build up on your walls and in your salt cell, preventing salt chlorine production. Scaling and pH rise is simple to manage by adding an anti-scaling product to your monthly maintenance regimen and adding a dose of pH reducer when necessary. The second hurdle for salt systems is replacement parts and their cost. Costs for startup can be high and every three to seven years you will need to replace your salt cell, which costs between $200 and $700, not to mention power and display boards that are susceptible to power surges. In comparison, a traditional chlorine pool will cost you anywhere from $150 to $300 per year. But the biggest concern from potential salt pullers is corrosion. There is concern that salt water will cause rusting of metal rails, ladders, and deck equipment. Also, there is a debate whether salt can affect some pool equipment like the pump shaft seal and heat exchangers. The best way to preserve your deck, accessories, and pool equipment is a sacrificial zinc anode. Zinc is a weak metal, making it more attractive than your steel components to corrosion. The zinc anode can be mounted on a plumbing line or attached to a pool wall or dropped in the skimmer basket. Okay, after weighing all your options, you have decided to make the big switch to salt. Let's look at some of the other things to consider when picking your salt system. The first step is figuring out your pool size in gallons. This will determine the size of chlorinators viable for your pool. There are plenty of online pool volume calculators on the net that can make the job a lot easier. Once you figure out your pool size, you'll need to think about your budget and the features you'll need. A salt system can range from $400 to $2,000. The lower end has free frills where the top end models are loaded with doodads. It's always important to keep in mind the size of your pool. If you have a 12,000 gallon pool, you probably don't need a $1,500 system with all the bells and whistles. A simple 20,000 gallon system with a basic display should be enough. However, we never recommend stretching the limits of a salt cell. For example, if you have a 20,000 gallon pool, we would recommend skipping over the 20,000 system and jumping up to the 40,000 system. This will keep your cell from maxing out on its limits and prolong its life. And lastly, consider where you should buy your system. In the description below, you can check out a full line of in-ground salt chlorinators. Okay, now that we have our salt chlorinator, it's time for installation. For a pool pro to install your system, you're looking at a bill at around $300 to $500, but many pool owners decide to tackle this job themselves. If you are a DIYer, we have a step-by-step -step video on how to install a salt chlorine generator listed in the description below. After the salt cell and control are in place, we're on to adding salt. To determine how much salt you need to add, pick up a salt strip test kit. These test strips will give you a salinity reading of your water, so you can use the system salt chart to determine how much salt to add. And you'll need a lot of it, usually 400 to 1,000 pounds. 
40 pound bags of 99% pure salt can be found in big box home goods stores for about five bucks a pop. To add the salt, pour in a few bags at a time and use a pool brush to help dissolve the salt into solution. And to answer a question we get a lot, no, you do not have to drain your pool and fill with fresh water. Simply add the salt to your pool. It is very important to start off with a properly balanced pool. Your water chemistry should start off with the following values on screen. At startup, it is best to shock your pool with a standard cranular chlorine shock or liquid chlorine. Then wait until the chlorine level has returned to between 1 to 3 parts per million before turning on the salt system. We suggest setting the system to 50% chlorine production and let the system run for about 24 hours. After 24 hours, test your pool water to see if your free chlorine is between 1 to 3 parts per million. If your chlorine level is too high or too low, adjust the output in 10% increments and retest your chlorine in 24 hours. Repeat this process until the proper chlorine level is reached. The nice thing is that once the salt system is dialed in, it is pretty much a set it and forget it system. Salt systems also have a super chlorinate feature which shocks your pool. So if you ever run into a demanding water condition, this feature will come in handy. Salt cells normally last three to seven years. To prolong the life of your cell, you'll want to clean it at least once a season. This requires that you soak your cell in a diluted muriatic acid solution to remove any calcium buildup. If you've decided that you want to convert your pool from traditional chlorine to salt, or if you have any questions, feel free to visit us over at inyopools.com and thanks for watching.